This video is all about keyboard shortcuts in Darktable. Yes, I know, it doesn't sound exciting, but that's what I used to think, and I was wrong. When Darktable 3.8 came out, we were told that all the previous shortcuts would be destroyed and we'd have to create our own. So, well, that was kind of the nudge in the right direction to have a look at the manual and try and see what we could do with this. And there are a lot of functionalities in these shortcuts. And that is what we will discover together today. I'm Nicholas. Let's go. OK, so first of all, I'd like to thank the people who um, made small financial contributions uh, to this um, channel. It enables me to keep things going and I have recently purchased two um, little apps. One that gives the red ring around the uh, cursor, which enables you to see maybe easier or quicker where I'm going. And the second one, which does the keystrokes. So you should see L, there we are, for light table, shift to get rid of the uh, borders. Press on shift again, it comes back. So I think those um, little pieces of software will make these videos easier to watch. So thank you to the people who did that. Um, going forward now, the keyboard shortcuts. The button to find is the one that is just underneath the uh, light table dark room uh, tabs. If you can't see it, then it is Command Shift T, which probably in Windows term would be Control Shift T. I'm not sure. Give it a try. Um, so Command Shift T, and this toggles the top uh, menu bars until you get them on and off and it works in the uh, dark room too so we need to find if we want to create uh, shortcuts you need this key here so first things first if i click on it then you'll see the cursor goes all strange either you get across which means that not much is going to happen or you get this square spiral thing which means you can create a shortcut there or you get a down arrow which means you can actually open or close one of the menus those are the three now if you have a cross then or anything actually if you just left click somewhere let's left click let's say on metadata editor it doesn't create a shortcut it just opens the shortcuts in the preferences on metadata editor and you can have a look underneath here at the bottom of the screen if there are already some uh, shortcuts that have been uh, created so that is a great way to learn your shortcuts. If you're wondering if a shortcut exists, then you can do that. Let's say I'll give you an example. In this, um, in the dark room here, if I just do keyboard shortcuts, just click on the screen. And here you can see the shortcuts that have been created for the screen. There are some of them actually that I discovered doing this. So we have them here, the active view. Can I just move this up so we can see them better? So space is moving forward. And Sure, you know that there are plenty that you probably know. Um, some that we use already, let's um, remember Command B is to go in the color assessment. That is the one I use to um, evaluate the, uh, the, expo the exposure of a photo. G for the guides, gamma check and Command G. And there are some, um, yeah, zooming in, these are the ones I discovered. Shift plus Alt and uh, speech marks or and you can try those yeah have a look at them and then if I do shift what was it again shift alt and that's it shift alt so shift so option for me on the Mac and then I've zoomed in 200% do it again and I zoom in 400 do it again 200 if I do shift um, uh, option and then the uh, what's two on my keyboard and I go to 47% zoom and if I do a three it goes back to fit that's quite useful command B is the one to evaluate it's this little light bulb at the bottom the one to evaluate the exposure of the photo which is a bit low so maybe we can move that up a bit anyway command B so there are a lot of shortcuts that exist already you want to know which ones they are Press on the little keyboard up here, click on a module, click on anything, and you'll see what already exists. Um, 
so that is that was actually not in the module i was in the uh, quick access panel if you want to see what is on filmic you get to filmic here and there's nothing here active view there is nothing there so that is the first use of this key is to assess what already exists let's now go about making our first uh, keyboard shortcut so the first uh, the easiest shortcuts to make are the ones that just switch on or off modules so an ideal one for this is lens correction which is a module that you don't really need to touch you just switch it on or off you can think about noise denoise um, if you have the profile found here i have a match uh, for the camera and um, the iso uh, which has been detected so really it's just for me anyway most of the time just a matter of switching it on or off so how do you go about making a shortcut a simple on off shortcut well keyboard um here the little button here and you go over the on off button you get that spiral and for lens correction i'll press on c for correction i know it says here c is assigned to processing module lens correction so now if i switch off the keyboard shortcuts when i press on c then it switches off press on c and it's on again so on off and that's a simple lens correction and for noise do the same keyboard go on the button end for noise and that's done and don't forget to switch off the keyboard shortcut because it does stay on until you've switched it off so end for noise that's on uh, off sorry and now it's on look off and on um if you want to remove a shortcut two ways to do that either you go back to defining shortcuts you go back to the same place and you recreate the same one and if you have a look here in the little um, tool tips you can see the shortcut um, which is written and that works for every single module too so if i just press on n again it says remove the shortcut yes and maybe i wanted to create control n so control n and now that has been defined if i want to remove that shortcut the the other way to do it is to go into the preferences in the shortcuts so i can go straight to the right place by clicking shortcuts and now left click on the module and if you just do a left click on somewhere it opens the preferences and i have here control n processing module enabled toggle and instance preferred so you can mess around with these if you stay with clicked if you click you can have a menu so we can either just show the module a focus instance um so if i do instance let's say um and i go I clear that and i do control n then i have the instance menu where i can have a new instance duplicate instance etc um you can also if i go back to that place click on it instead of instance I can just show put enable let's say and instead of toggle here you can just say oh, i want just want to switch it on because you know that if you switched it on you don't want to switch it off again which means if you press on the key again by accident it won't switch off that is for you to choose a uh, second way to delete a shortcut is you just select it in here so here it's selected and just press on the delete key and remove the shortcut so there we are for the simple on off uh, shortcuts very useful for the very fast modules um, that you just need to switch on for some modules it's not just a question of switching them on or off um, we just we'd like to go to the module because there are many um, options to choose from let's say filmic color balance so if you have look at filmic um, uh, it's always on anyway if you're in the uh, scene referred workflow anyway but um, you you might want to adjust several uh things like the white exposure the black exposure contrast latitude anyway all sorts of things so you can actually have a shortcut that will just take you to the module and to do that let's go to the uh, keyboard shortcut button and you go this time not on the button but on the module itself and then you press down a key i'm just going to press f f for filmic and that means it has been recorded as a shortcut so now if I'm somewhere in the interface and I press on F, it will open the filmic module for me. So that could be useful for filmic, 
can be useful for color calibration, uh, color balance RGB, the modules where there's a bit of work to be done, diffuse and sharpen maybe, um, rotate and perspective, lots of modules where you want to make some adjustments. Next up for these shortcuts, we have something that's not really shortcuts actually. It's adjusting what you have in this uh, quick access panel. Um, let's say filmic. Now, um, filmic, I would typically adjust the white relative, very often just an automatic measure. I would adjust the black relative, but I'd also adjust other things, but dy not dynamic range scaling, or, well, not very often anyway. And it's not in the access panel. And the ones I want um, here, the ones I want are not in the access panel. Let's say contrast, latitude, and midtone saturation. Those are the ones. I use and this button here the keyboard shortcut button can actually make you um, or make some of these things appear and disappear from the quick access panel I'll show you quickly press on the keyboard shortcut and when you go on these cursors you get down arrows down arrows means you can remove them so if I do control click on dynamic range scaling it's gone auto tune levels gone don't want them OK, remove the um, the keyboard shortcuts. Go now to the rear of the filmic module and I want to add in contrast. Now, you remember the arrows were facing down because control click removed them. Now, if I do keyboard shortcuts, the arrows will face up. Look, they're facing up. Control click will add them. And now it's down. Well, yes, because if I do control click, it will remove it again. Latitude, I'm going to add. Mid-tone saturation, I'm going to add. Stop the shortcuts and let's go to the quick access panel and you'll see that I now have contrast, latitude, mid-tone saturation. And these are the ones I would use. Now I don't have the graph. I've actually never tried to get the graph to appear. Let's see if I can get it. Graph. Quick access panel, I have the graph. That's wonderful. Now I have the complete filmic module with the not the complete I have the filmic module with the one two three four five six widgets in the quick access panel how good is that how cool is that um so that is uh useful uh you have to select things because if I do this for every single module I'm going to run out of place but it's up to you to choose the ones that you want and that's how it works Strange that it's with the keyboard shortcuts. But anyway, it's a good um, it's a good good option. The last use case for these keyboard shortcuts for today are um, adjusting sliders with just a mouse movement. Now, when I say mouse movement, it also works with MIDI devices. So I suppose we're talking about knobs, buttons. Um, all thoughts you can of things you can twist and turn with um, with with uh, controllers, whether they're game controllers or those special devices they use for um, uh, for image processing. I don't have one, so I only use the mouse. This one is a bit delicate for me to use because sometimes I just can't get it to catch on. Maybe that's due to the um, the fact that I'm on Mac and it was originally made for Linux. I don't know. It, it always works, but sometimes it's a bit fussy to get to use. Let's do that with exposure. Let's say if I want to press, if I press on E and move the mouse button, then I want to be able to control, just stay pressed on E and I want to control the exposure. That's what I want to do. It doesn't work yet. How do you get it to work? Press on keyboard shortcuts hover over the cursor that you want to um that you want to control stay pressed on the shortcut button for me it's e and then you move the mouse no clicks then you move the mouse See, i didn't catch it there you have to be able to catch it there that's the second time there. once you've caught it you can stop let go switch off keyboard shortcuts and now if i go in the middle of the screen here Press on E and if I move the cursor left or right, I will adjust the exposure. Now it's a little bit, so there's a bit of a lag. Um, that is 
uh, well, it makes it less useful than than how it could be. I'll just say it like that. Um, there are some options we can use with that keyboard. Click on exposure to go to the shortcut panel. And here I have, if you see the active view, I have E horizontal, which means that it's button E horizontal movement. It's changing the value and I have a speed and the speed can be adjusted. I can adjust it to two. And that means that when I press on E and move the mouse, then it'll move faster. So you can adjust the speed for each cursor depending whether you want it to go fast or slow. So that is uh, something you can explore too. So that's it for the keyboard shortcuts, all the different uses. What I would advise is not to create a hundred at a time, because if you're like me, you'll create them and five minutes later, you'll have forgotten them. Um, I would create one, use it. And then when you've learned that one, create one more and add them up. Um, as you go along to personalize the uh, the software. There we are, if you can hear a pitter patter, hope you can't, that's my dog who just got up from a nap. Um, well, well that, that said, I'll stop the video here, let you explore the keyboard shortcuts and go and let the dog out. Okay, see you soon.